Hello. It has been my experience that when trying to figure out how to use CLAP on Rust, there's really not any good documentation out there on the web to explain the very basic, simple parts of it. So that's what this video is. Uh, here we've got a GNOME desktop on Debian. And I am going to open up a terminal window. A Terminator, actually, because the standard terminal does not do a split and I want to do a split. I'm going to maximize this screen. I'm going to create a directory. Well, actually, I've already got a directory called Projects and Rust. And in here, I'm going to create a new project. Cargo new, we'll call it Clapper. I'm assuming you already know how to do the basic minimal in Rust to create a edit and create a main program. Uh, if we look in the Clapper directory now, we see the standard stuff that the cargo creates, including the source file. I mean, yeah, the main file, main RS. Just a print line, hello world program. And you know how to run it, cargo run, and there it runs. And you know that doing cargo run is essentially the same thing as going to target, debug, the name of your project, and there it is. Cargo Run does do the compiling first, and then it does the running. Okay, if we look in our Cargo Toml file, we see that there is nothing under dependencies. In order to use CLAP, we have to have a line here under dependencies. If you go to crates.io, which is where you would get CLAP, it will tell you what to put in there. But with the most recent versions of Cargo, you can just do Cargo Add CLAP, and that will do the job. It will go out and grab whatever it needs, and now when we look in that file, it's there. However, we need a little bit more than that, so we're going to say cargo add clap features derive. And then when we look in the file, it's added the extra little bit here. So this is all we need. You could type this in manually into this file, but the cargo add means you don't have to remember what version number you're working with and so forth and so on. Now I'm going to edit the source main file and I want to split this screen so that I can edit over here and run the program over here. So there's our program, if we come over here and run it, it goes and grabs whatever crate stuff it needs the first time and it compiles everything. This does not change the size of your executable because we're not using it, we're just compiling it at this point. Uh, next time we run it, it won't go grab that stuff. It'll just run the program. To use clap, we need to use put in a use statement of clap, and we can put everything in there, or all we need is just the parser piece. We need to build a struct, and for our example here, we're going to create our we're going to run our clapper program with two. Uh, program inputs, two arguments. One is a person's name and one is a person's age. So when we run the program it will look something like this. Uh, Gen 33. And right now that doesn't do anything even if we run the target version. Gen 33. It doesn't do anything because the program has not yet been programmed to do to handle that. Uh, so our struct, we'll, we'll call it person, will look something like this. It's going to have a name, which is of a string type, and it's going to have an age, which is, let's say, a U size, U size type. And down here in our main program, the way we create a variable that uses that struct is to say let variable, uh, we'll use person again with a lowercase p, which makes it a completely different data item than the uppercase p, person struct. That person, and it's a type, a variable called person, which is the struct that we created right up here, equal to um, person path parse. And that will allow us to come down here and say in our print statement something like persons is a uh, age years old.
then we would put our variables back here behind the, the double quote uh, person dot name and person dot age that won't work quite yet we've got to come up here and tell the program that we're going to derive that data from the parser so derive and I know you're not going to understand all this but all you're trying to do is see the very basics of how to do this uh, is that a capital letter I think it is and no semicolon now if we've got all our T's crossed and our I's dotted I'm gonna save this with control s come over here and try to run it Uh, and close to, oh yeah, I forgot my close quote. I mean my close bracket. Save it again. Come over here and run it again. And that worked. It gets your gen is 33 years old. So that's the very basics of using clap. You can get a little bit fancier. For example, you can come down here and say, oh, let me show you something over here. If we say cargo run help, it gives you that. But you can come over here and say something like, uh, triple slash uh, enter name here save it compile it run it and now you see it says enter name here come over here and do the same thing for age three slashes enter age here save it come over here do your help again and now You've got both those messages. That's what this uh, triple slash here does, is it adds some documentation to your help screen. Uh, we can add some more stuff. For example, if we want to be able to, right now, these variables, if we put in the name again and an age, that works. If we reverse those two things, put them in different order, you get errors that's because right now it's positional it's determined by the position of your variables but we can name our variables by doing something like this arg long and that should do now when we come over here we can say name is equal to gen uh, what did I do? oh semicolon no nope, no nope. Let me go in. I got something wrong here. Pound. Try it now. It took it because even though the order is reversed, the name is specified on gen. You can also specify the name, of course, on age. Pound. Left bracket. Arg. Long. Long just means this is the long format which means you're typing in slash slash name. Save it. Come over here. Now we can say age equal to 23 also. That works. You don't even have to put in the equal sign. You just put a space in. If you want to be able to shorten that, you can say short. And it doesn't matter whether you put the order in long short or short long. Save that. Now we can come over here and just say dash A instead of the full H or dash in. If you want to give a default, for example, right now, if you leave off the name, you'll get an error saying you've got to enter name. You're missing it. So we can come over here and give it a default. Default value for the type is equal to a string from Jenny. Uh, yeah, save that. Now we leave the name off. Uh, it might help if I spell value right. Now we leave the name off and it puts in Jenny as a default. If you want to default down here, it's the same way. Default value for this type is equal to, we'll say she's 40 now, she's gotten older. Say this, come over here, leave the name off, and the age. Uh, still can't spell value. Try it now. And there we go, Jenny is 40 years old. 
or we can specify that it's Bob instead of Jenny. Oops, got space in there. It's Bob instead of Jenny. Or we can say his age is 77. Or like I say, we can leave that off and let the default take care of it. Jenny is 77 years old. So that gives you some basics of how clap, clapper, or clap works. And uh, I think that's pretty much all the very basic. That should be all the very basics that should get you going. So happy uh, coding in Rust using clap.